another batty day out. Welcome back, you wonderful weirdos, and look where we are today. This is the home, the ancestral home, of George Washington. That's where we are. There's Mother Hag and the two dogs. National Trust own and run this property now. And in a couple of minutes, I'll be taking you indoors. So here we are, we've just walked in through the front door and I patiently waited for a small party of people to come around and have a look. And as they're going around the house, I've stopped Anna, who has very kindly <laughs> <laughs> agreed to show us around. So, hello Anna, Hi. thank you very much, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Where are we in here? What so, can you tell us? Um, this is the um, 17th century dining room. Um, we uh, advertise ourselves as a 17th century manor house, um, but the truth is we've actually been here quite a lot longer than that. Um, the foundations of the hall date back to the mid 13th century, and you still see some sort of remnants of the architecture feature from those time period in the kitchen. Um, so if you'd like to follow me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so these, these archways we think are actually Norman, um, Norman? Yes, um, wow. they're sort of the architectural style. So we think so that's they... from the 11th century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so 11th, 12th century. Um, they've gone undergone quite a bit of restoration, as you can tell by the sort of new bricks yep. here. Um, and then if you follow me into the kitchen, um, you can see sort of the original ceiling height um, where that like extra line of bricks is. Oh, okay. Um, and this sort of would have been one of like the original windows, the original window height. So originally this was a one story building? Yes, yeah, right. yeah. Um, sort of second floors and um, bedrooms didn't really, t like they're quite a recent invention um, in the English homes, especially in sort of lower class. So this would have been a middle class house. Um, so they're sort of a, a very kind of new thing in the 17th century is having a private room yeah. if you're not uber rich, uber wealthy. Um, but yeah, and then so. Um, Is that a bucket of fish? Yes, yeah, so we had an <laughs> art installation uh, last year called Wasa, where we got like artists in to interpret stories about the hall. Okay. Um, and we got all sorts of things. We had like a lady in white, we had um, the lady of Heartburn in like a Gaviscon dress. <laughs> really? Um, but yeah, so the, there's a, we've also got like a calf's head up the other end of the hall. Um, that just kind of, yeah. So every day sort of would have been really busy with many mouths to feed. I'm trying to think of a cheesy joke. <laughs> well, think of a Gouda one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then, so that would have been to um, like a mechanism to sort of turn the spit and it probably would have uh, hung extra like large pots of water and things wow. over the fire. Um, but yeah, so in the, in the 17th century, um, it was owned by the James family. This is incredible. Um, so it was owned by the James family, Dorothy and William James. Uh, William James was the grandson of the Bishop of Durham. Um, he had a habit of marrying wealthy widows. Marrying wealthy widows? <laughs> yeah. How many wealthy widows did he marry? At least three, because wow. it was with the funds from his third marriage that he actually purchased the hall. Um, wow. And then his son Francis never lived here, but William lived here up in most of his adult life until his death in 1662. Wow. Um, so we present the hall to kind of give you an impression of what the hall would have looked like in 1662. Um, so, like, we have these little labels um, that sort of show you um, what kind of things were in the hall in 1662 okay. because we have an inventory taken oh, okay. upon his death. Um, so, like, you've got that. That one is suggesting William the long was bench. the great great grandfather of a particularly famous person? No, so um, the. <laughs> Not like me to get it wrong, is it? <laughs> so, um, the George Washington connection is actually quite a bit older than that. Um, so the, um, a man named William of Hartburn, sometime before 1180. Is this why the heart, the, the Gaviscon lady yes. was, was dressed well, up? There's always a connection, Hartburn, isn't there? Yeah. Um, so um, in 1180, uh, the, um, William Hartburn moved from Hartburn to uh, the village of Washington. Was that his name, Hartburn? Yes, William de Hartburn. 
Um, so he um, followed the Norman aristocratic tradition of naming yourself after where you came from. Right. So William the Con Conqueror was William de Normandy. Yep. Um, William of Hartburn becomes William de Washington or William de Wessington as it was at the time. As in Wessington Primary School. And Wessington Way in Sunderland, yeah. Um, and um, he uh, was the uh, direct ancestor of George Washington, the first president of the Fantastic. United States of America. So it is true to say that this is George Washington's ancestral home. It is, yes, yes, Although very he much. he never actually lived here. Never actually lived here. I don't even know if he lived, if ever visited the UK. Um, but we do know that the... Um, you know, the, he was supposedly quite proud of his heritage. Um, we've, we've heard from our sort of friends over in Mount Vernon that he, um, you know, sort of uh, put his crest up everywhere. And I don't okay. know if you've seen the crest. Let's have a look at the crest. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty reminiscent of a certain flag. Um, we're mm -hmm. not unfortunately allowed to say that it was a direct link, but Okay. If you've got eyes, you can well, kind of tell. <laughs> I'm in in my uneducated form. I'm probably permitted to say that on that quest, <laughs> I saw stars and stripes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, this sort of hall and this village is the reason that the capital of the United States is called Washington. That's fantastic. Um, but yeah, so the Washingtons sold the hall in 1613. Um, there'd been Washingtons here from sort of the 12th century right up until here, uh, right up until the 1612. Uh, um, and they um, would have sold the house on to the Jameses. Uh, the Washington family, the main branch has sort of moved down south by that point. And then in 1657, um, I, one of the Washingtons moved over to the US and he was George's grandfather. Um, they'd supported the king during the English Civil War, um, which would not have made them popular during the interregnum, which is when we had Puritan rule. Um, they would have been taxed a little bit higher than those who had supported <laughs> Parliament. Uh, no religious freedom, um, especially for uh, you know people who were thinking of having Christmas or singing. <laughs> um, How all very outlawed. dare they? How very <laughs> um, pagan of them. <laughs> so um, they went over to America in 1657 just to for get a little away bit. with Christmas. Yeah. So they could enjoy themselves. Yeah and drink a plenty yes. and take their stars and stripes with them. <laughs> all, all about that freedom right from the beginning. <laughs> so I, I love the idea of there being a door and I'm not sure what's the other side. Um, so the other side is actually the staircase upstairs, um, but I have a very special room to show you first. Um, so this is my favorite room in the house. Okay. Um, this is the panelled room. <gasps> oh my. <laughs> yeah, so this is my personal favourite room in the house, and it's a favourite of a lot of our visitors as well. I can see why. Um, so this would have been in the uh, 17th century, this would have been sort of the private family area. Uh, the main hall would have been uh, a real hub, a real hive of activity, and so when the family wanted a bit more privacy, they would have come in here. Um, the ladies of the house would have been in here a lot. Um, <laughs> Uh, they would have sat in here. Um, the unmarried uh, sister of either the wife or the husband would have spun wool in here. So um, you can see her like spinning wheel over here. Okay. Um, and that's where we get the term spinster from. It's an unmarried woman who spins wool. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, so, and then another thing that uh, young ladies would have been very good at um, was actually embroidery. Right. And we have a beautiful example of a stump work cabinet um, over on the table. Um, so it sort of depicts uh, on the top uh, the coronation of Charles II. Let me zoom in on that. So um, I can do that from a distance, I think. Yeah. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it depicts the um, coronation of Charles II. You can see him in all of his regalia there. Um, and then you can see in the clouds up here, the sun appearing from the clouds, which is meant to represent God sort of smiling down upon uh, the new divine right of kings, uh, the restoration of the divine right of kings. 
um, and the restoration of the monarchy. That's um, incredible. And then there's also um, a number of biblical scenes around the outside, um, including on this side is actually my favourite depiction of a camel I think I've ever seen. Um, just in this corner, I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's, it's this little guy here. Um, it's just quite funny to me to picture um, a 17th century young lady trying to imagine what a camel looks like from <laughs> stories in the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> um, that is incredible. But yeah, and then we also have um, The Accomplished Cook by Robert Sorry, May. Sorry, how old is this box? So that would have been uh, around 1660. This one box that we are looking at now? Yes, is almost from 1660. Years old. Yep. Um, so stump work, again, is one of those things that would have been uh, very um, common for young ladies of a certain class. Um, it's quite unusual embroidery style. Um, you sort of applique bits on uh, rather than embroidering straight in. And then this is The Accomplished Cook by Robert May. Um, this was kind of the first uh, cookbooks uh, published in England, um, we have sort of the printing press becoming much more common um, from the Tudor period right up until the Jacobean era. Um, and this sort of lists new uh, foodstuffs that are coming over from Americas, from Australia, from the <laughs> Indias. Um, and it's got a lot of recipes for calf's head is the thing that we mostly get asked about. The word, um, sorry? Calf's head. Calf's head. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, it would have been a real delicacy in the 1600s. Well, um, we've seen the pig's head on the table out there. Uh, by yeah, the so that's that's the calf's head that we had that was also part of our um, exhibition. Wow. Um, yeah. So if incredible. you'd like to follow me upstairs. That's an incredible piece of furniture there too. Yeah. So unfortunately, all of our furniture is not original to the house. Okay. Um, it's. Uh, been begged, borrowed and bartered from a lot of different places where we're all mishmash. Um, so this panelling was actually donated by an American ambassador's daughter, Miss Mabel Choate, in the oh, 1950s wow. when the hall was undergoing restoration. Um, and yeah, we, we're sort of a real, a real puzzle piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Um, yeah, and then if you'd like to follow me upstairs. Um, so as I was saying about things being wow. a real mishmash, um, the stairs uh, are actually from a pub in uh, Guildford no that was way. demolished in 1906. Um, wow. It's all the right age, all the right style. It's just not technically Original ours. Yeah. Um, oh my word, look at that. It just <laughs> goes on. Yeah. So we've got three floors. Um, the top floor is uh, unfortunately just the attic. It's very boring. I think the only thing we've got up there is a Christmas tree. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so these doors are amazing as well. Oh, they're absolutely. Uh, they're they're lovely, but they do take some care to lock. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> when I lock up in the evening, you have to watch your fingers occasionally. Um, so yeah, this is the upstairs. Um, here we've got some information about Frederick Hill, uh, the man the 11th who 11th century thing back? <laughs> yes, along with our 11th century uh, central heating. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, um, I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, Frederick Hill was a local schoolmaster. He was truly um, an inspirational man. You know, he was the kind of guy who, uh, during the Depression, organised... Uh, raising money for uh, kids so they could get a decent meal at school oh, wow. because he knew that it would be the only decent meal he'd get. they'd get a day. He was like the Jamie Oliver of his time. Yeah, yeah, Marcus Rashford. Yeah, We've Marcus had some comparisons, Rashford. yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, you know, he was truly an amazing guy. Um, so he set up the Preservation Society that... Um, raise the money we got a lot of the money um, that we needed to purchase the hall so the 350 pounds um that was donated by a wealthy american businessman who was in sunderland um and yeah so that's that's the reason the hall's still here is this amazing guy frederick hill so the kindness of one person can preserve not mm. only this but feed a whole community of children. Yeah, and during the depression, he also organised for uh, um, a lot of the men who were out of work to make 
shoes for the children because a lot of the children would have never owned their own pair of shoes. <laughs> Um, so, so sad. But the reason that it needed to be preserved was because in the sort of 1850s, um, the hall was turned into tenements. So um, I'll take you into the tenement room. Um, so this was the home of the Bone family. Uh, the Bone family um, had 16 children. Uh, sorry, I think you said 16 children. I did indeed say 16 children. And the entire family would live in this one yes. room. Yeah, um, so they would have had no gas, no electricity. Uh, the only running water that they had for the entire building would have been a single cold tap outside. Wow. And the only toilet was a single Ashfield pit known as the Midden. Um, known as? The Midden. The Midden. Yeah, so it, that's uh, a term that we use for, uh, in archaeology, especially to um, talk about a rubbish pit. Do you think these would have doubled up as a bed? Oh, definitely. So this is little Stanley. Um, <laughs> Stanley is the gentleman. Oh, there is actually a doll in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's little Stanley. I didn't see the doll. I wasn't really <laughs> looking at the screen. I was looking at what I was doing. Yeah, um, so that's little Stanley. Um, he was one of 16. Wow. Um, he used to come into the hall very regularly, actually. Um, Looks like Farchie. <laughs> a lot of the belongings that we actually have in the room are his mother and grandmother's. <laughs> so this was uh, Mrs Bone's chest. So this is one of the only original um, items that we have that are native to the hall. Wow, that is actually an original item. Yep. Apart from the embroidered box downstairs. Yep, yeah, yeah. But wow. that, that is completely native to the house. Wow. That's a bony chest. Yep. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, so conditions were pretty dire. Um, they, this was one of sort of nine rooms in the hall wow. um, that would have each housed an entire family. Um, that's what's, incredible, isn't it? Yeah, what's really interesting is we actually have sort of the electoral register um, and it's really interesting to see what ones have people registered and what like what rooms don't because we know that if there was nobody registered to vote in that area um, it meant there was either like a single woman or a widow or someone living there because they couldn't no vote, vote at the time. No vote. Wow, incredible. Um, so it's a really interesting piece of social history. These family photos here. Yeah. Mm -hmm to zoom in as opposed to move the camera in, I think. Wow. All very stern faces. Yeah, well, um, photos would have taken a long time to take. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, so. Wow. You wouldn't want to hold a smile for too long. Wow, incredible. Yeah, and then, um, so probably one of the sort of most important rooms that we have in the house. Is it um, the toilet? Unfortunately not. Oh. <laughs> um, this is the either the Liberty Room or the Washington Room. Okay. So this is where we have all of our information. The Washington Room. Yeah, so um, over, uh, so we have uh, a lottery ticket signed by George Washington. Really? Yep. Where? Uh, right there. This? Yep. That's the lottery ticket yep. signed by George Washington? Indeed. Oh my word. And I instinctively went straight to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we also have a, uh, a painting of Mount Vernon um, that was uh, donated to us by President Jimmy Carter. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's George Washington's home over in Mount Vernon in Virginia. This is? Yes. And that was donated, that uh, painting specifically was donated to us by President Jimmy Carter. Wow. Um, he visited us in uh, May 1997, uh, 1977 even, 77. my bad. Yeah. Um, and he and the, um, the Prime Minister actually um, planted trees in oh, the village. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so these are the shovels that they used to uh, ah, plant the trees in the village. commemorative shovel. Yes. Ah, so we've gone from a bony chest to a commemorative show. <laughs> you can't yeah. actually read that. Um, it is possible if I get it in the right light. Yes, so this spade was used by President Jimmy Carter of the United States of America to plan a uh, Lyrodendron tulip, tulip Tulipifera tree to mark a visit to Washington in the borough of Sunderland, England, on 6th of May 1977. Of course, the Americans would have said on May the 6th, 1977. <laughs> yeah, and then um, this is probably one of my favourite <laughs> objects in the hall. Uh, this was Martha Washington's fan. No way. Yep, and they are all ostrich feathers. Wow. It was presented to her by the Marquis de Lafayette. 
Um, and yeah, it's it's one of my absolutely favourite items in the hall. It's Why got an ivory bone it? handle. Um, I don't know, there's just something so... Um, you know, you hear these stories about Martha Washington being such a lady. <laughs> and I think this fan really sort of sums that up. <laughs> Um, you know, the detailing on the handle is absolutely exquisite. It really is. Um, it's all very exotic. Unfortunately, a lot of it does have its links back to colonialism, obviously, um, which sort of, it sours a lot of it, but um, it is a gorgeous item. But do you know what? Um, we still need to embrace the history, whether oh, it's good or bad. Oh, we definitely do, yeah. We I really agree, do. I agree completely. Because we learn from it. Mm. There's always a positive. Now, that's the crest that we saw in the cups downstairs. Yes. Coat of arms dates back 1376. Yes, yeah, so um, here we have the Washington family tree. Um, so right up at the top, we have William de Hartburn or William de Wessington. And um, then it was Captain Lawrence Washington, uh, sorry, John Washington that moved uh, over to the US in 1657. Wow. Where was John Washington? Uh, John Washington's there. There he is. Yes. Wow. My family tree has actually got President Nixon's family on it. Oh, wow. Very nice. Yeah. I don't tell a lot of people. <laughs> I just told you. <laughs> wow. This is beautiful. Mm. It's stunning. And our American friends would recognise these. <laughs> Definitely. And we actually have our 4th of July celebrations coming up as well. Um, When's that? Uh, 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Where we, um, we raise the American flag, uh, we get some local school children in to sing the American anthem. I noticed there was an empty flagpole yep. in the garden. So it gets raised three times a year. Uh, 4th of July, Thanksgiving Day, and George Washington's birthday. There we go. Oh, when's his birthday? I can't remember off the top of my head, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. Put that in um, the comments. February 22nd. <laughs> the, uh, February 22nd. Yes. I didn't mean to put you on the <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> I, I, uh, I tend to talk more about the James family than the Washingtons, so... Uh, fair enough. They were here longer. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Wow. Have we done it? We've done all yep, of it. Yeah, that's all of it. Mm. Wow, thank you so, of so course, much no for problem, your time. Yeah. That is amazing. I can't believe it. I'm just going to take the camera downstairs and, mm -hmm. and show the garden. I've got photos of the gardens. Yes. So, yeah. Um, and if, uh, if you want a recommendation, the trees that uh, the present Jimmy Carter and the Prime Minister uh, planted are outside the pub in the village. Oh, what, is that the Cross Keys pub? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's the two Handy. trees that are ensconced by the little fence. I'll go and get a photo of those as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so of much. Of course, yeah, really, no problem. Really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Awesome. Oh, look. And there is Mother Hag. <laughs> that was so good. Hello, girls. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing jumping up? Come here, you. Don't you go in that house. Hello, Millie Moose. Get down, get down, get down. Come here. Good girl. Come on. <laughs>